work. Good. So we skip this. Um, yeah, we had a bit of a, a, a sync issue here, but uh, there is a picture that you see, which is the quiz of the day. Um, uh -huh. Since Hans is anyway pruning trees, this might be actually a, a tree that he recognizes, but maybe not. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't have it, but it's a it's a nice one. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a really beautiful. Um, small tree that flowers at the moment um, and it's it's native to uh, Central Europe which is also quite specific uh -huh. well I'm, I'm I'm not gonna say more um, but I think it's a it's a good start to have a nice spring flower good so um, today we are a bit uh, more focusing on the pedagogical background of the project um, as an entry point to talk about the app development and the project development. So what you see here is basically how we create the right attitude to enable good learning experiences. And they usually always start with attention. Mm -hmm. It is when we have uh, gained attention from somebody or when we ourselves have uh, created a focus that we are able to move forward and create interest. So um, this, this bridge here between attention and interest is, is super important, even more so in our uh, flooded contemporary modern societies where there is so much distraction. And then when you move forward to create lasting and solid learning experiences, there are several strategies and methods that can help. Uh, so there is autonomy, creativity, emotions. You see them listed on the right side. This is really um, top-notch uh, neuroscientific research in pedagogy. Um, those are the methods that help to go from interest to engagement then to investment and even enthusiasm. Um, and obviously when you are invested, enthusiastic about something, then you are driven so much that uh, whatever you do is really becoming part of your system uh, with every fiber, as they say. Um, well, so the last bullet point down here is activity and movement. That's obviously what we also try to do by going outdoors into nature. Um, but today we are actually gonna talk more about uh, autonomy. So education and learning is like two sides of the same coin. Um, education on the one side is usually driven by somebody outside of ourselves. It's an institution, it's a teacher, and learning comes from inside out. It's the self that has an interest. And um, we need to somehow create a match. And probably this is also one of the biggest issues that we have in our formal education systems that... Uh, governments try to instill content uh, into people that does not match their interests and maybe uh, even less so the needs that we have in our societies. So if we compare modern or existing teaching methods, then for our project, we need to ask ourselves, which is the method that can scale nature at connection most effectively? And uh, what also we in Green Steps um, have uh, tried, um, you know, standard classes, uh, a guided training. Um, we tried experiential activities. The question is always, what is the format that can really scale nature connection in the most effective manner? And what we talk about is looking at the Kiel curve in a very fast manner too, that can reach many, many people. So, um, back in the 1980s, um, I was myself a boy, about the age of my son now, and I engaged in a run and jump obsession. So some of you might know it, but on the left side, we have uh, the first version of uh, Mario Brothers, 1983, and on the right side, uh, uh, 
great Gianna Sisters, which was a run and jump game developed in 1987. And a lot of uh, children played hours and hours and hours uh, in those simple games. Um, did we learn a lot? No, but we, we had a good time. We enjoyed ourselves very much. So what this, what this method did was uh, creating um, a good time. It was fun. Um, and so time passed quickly. And I, I think many children uh, actually really got hooked. Um, I did it for only a year, but I observed that something similar is, of course, happening ever since. Currently, there are computer games like uh, Pokemon, like Minecraft, that also keep children hooked to screens. Now, we know that this is not beneficial in many, many regards to health, to mental health, uh, to physical health. Um, but it is an interesting observation that this obviously creates enthusiasm and very deep investment. So the question is, what can we do to learn from this gamification experience, maybe combine it with science communication and merge it with experiential outdoor education to create something that can really scale and connect people with nature? So today we talk about gamification and how we can apply it for, for our cause. And uh, what you might remember from one of the old calls is how we think that a bioregional identity can be formed. So we take any given activity outdoors, a walk, a hike, a horse ride, a kayak uh, ride, and you match it with a feature, a natural feature, a tree, a group of trees, any other natural feature, a cave, and you match it with species a fungus, a plant, a mammal, an insect. And what you get is a route. So the more of those routes you have experienced in a certain territory, the more you grow your bioregional identity. This is the concept that we propose. Now, today we show the first time uh, a full gamification cycle on the arc in regard to one element of nature in regard to trees, old trees. It always starts with the observation. The next step is that you collect something which already in itself is a gamification, drives this hunter and gatherer instinct. Then you receive a badge and you can compare yourself on a leaderboard. Um, Whenever we create such uh, an environment uh, with the help of the ARC, then we actually do something that is really a run and jump version 4.0. On the left side, you see uh, Mario World, which is the 2023, so 40 years later version of Mario Brothers. Um, and you see that on the screen, children also have to uh, complete routes. And every route consists of challenges and you collect different things. Of course, this is a completely online experience. It's still fun. Um, it is now sometimes three-dimensional. Um, but what is missing is that we actually have nothing, no connection with the real world. And on the right side, you see our original concept picture that we create such routes, the mobile campus 4.0, in a city, starting, for example, at the train station, and then you move through challenges and collect different objects, natural objects in the city. So we could say that the mobile campus is actually a run and jump 4.0 version where we have a digital twin of the real world. Okay, so this was the intro for today, new narrative. We are game designers, and Lucas is going to show as master game designer what we have new. But I start. Okay. But Gloria actually <laughs> starts with the route. Good. Yes. So we start with the BFG gamification cycle. Yeah. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So exactly what we are going to do today is showing the gamification in action. And the gamification starts with a facilitator, which is today me, deciding, selecting a best practice, and then designing, designing an event. So the best practice that I have selected for today is a promenade and ring, which is a new walk that we have designed here in St. Paulton. And it's, um, it's like a circle, a loop walk, let's say, that goes all around the old medieval wall of the city. And those walls were actually demolished in 1848. So nowadays there is only like a very little, like a couple of towers that can be observed, but nothing more. But what is actually interesting are all the old buildings that can still be observed all around this ring, which kind of represent this time in which the city expanded and became like actually a very, a real city. So here, like, and of course, around those old buildings, there are also old trees and that were probably planted at that time. And uh, yeah, here you can see, for example, like uh, a map. Our old map of the city with still all the medieval wall around. And then I think later on there is also one map which shows the city more modern, like nowadays. Uh, yeah, like this is how it got later on. Okay, and then there are new plans to regreen the street actually, but they are not implemented yet. So what I can show you now as well is uh, mm, so wait, I take some time to that. Okay, mm, pedagogy. Here you can see all the trees that can be observed. Why is my laptop so slow? Um. Okay. Yes. And. Uh, in the facilitation tab. You can see exactly the map that we are going to walk. So this is the this is the route. Those are the trees and those are like extensions that can be done by taking to other areas of the town. So this is the best practice I have selected for today. Let's imagine that we have walked this this morning. So I have an activity. I go into activities. And uh, actually, I have been here already. Ready? OK. This is an activity. And this was done this morning from 9 to 12. I have one participant. Uh, let's see who he is. And let's award him the point and the BI. So my participant is, uh, it was Robin Hood. Okay, mm -hmm. didn't even say the age actually. Okay, so um, he's already checked in. Uh, I'm just going to award him the input, input point. Okay. And then the BI, by original identity. So those are all the 15 trees. Okay, now I pass the word to Robin Hood that he will show you what he's actually able to see on his screen after I awarded him a point on the BI. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, cool. So um, uh, I went for the walk today with Gloria with my account of Robin Hood uh, for the purpose of um, um, watching on, on the screen uh, what it looks like for the participant to go from zero to something. So as you see now on my screen, I have just signed up for this event. So I don't have any impact points um, and I don't have anything on my profile. So if I now uh, refresh the page, because Gloria has just awarded me um, mm -hmm. all those things, um, I see that I got 30 impact points, all of them in the participation. Uh, so that means that the activity took about three hours and uh, I have grown my by original identity to 5.5%. So let's be curious about this. I enter here into the my by original identity uh, page. Uh, this uh, 
page has gotten a facelift this month. And uh, let's go through the elements one by one. So first of all, my learning space is in the commons of some Pölten. I have learned about 11, speci 11 species so far and about 18 specimens. So if I click in here, I'm going to go to see them. And this is the place where I collect my big friendly giant badges. So these are the badges with which we want to motivate people to go and observe more trees in their surroundings. And you can see in the first walk that I have attended, I already got the first uh, big friendly giant guardian badge. So uh, there are thresholds you need to observe and later on also map a certain amount of trees. So maybe Knut, could you uh, say what are the thresholds for, for the different badges? Yes, we have currently five uh, badges. So the idea is um, what is basically a ground rule for gamification to make it uh, easy in the beginning and then make it increasingly difficult. So you get the first badge when you have observed 10 old trees, 10 BFGs. The second badge when you have observed uh, 100 and have mapped 10. So it's also motivation that you map trees. The mm. third badge at 300 observations and 30 mappings. Um, and then 500 observations, 15 mappings, and uh, we said uh, 1,000 observations and 100 mappings for the last batch. Yeah, no low numbers, <laughs> but uh, these are goals for a long term. So, well, considering how long they play Mario Brothers or stuff like <laughs> this. <laughs> right. I think I'm level, level two or level three right now in my real account. But anyway, so uh, the next big thing that you can see on the right side is the map. And uh, this is also a new addition of this month. And you can see one, the shape of the area where you are playing the game at this time. So where you are observing and collecting uh, uh, specimen cards. So you can see that uh, there are many gray ones. Those are the ones that I have not observed yet. And then you can see the green ones. These are the ones that I have already discovered and I have collected them mm -hmm. into my profile. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let's have a look at the second tab, which is uh, the overview of uh, my bioregional identity in terms of species. So this is also a new addition this month, right? Now you can also collect species. So you can see that this is split into two sections. One is discovered, where I can see all the species. Right now I have only trees in here, but if that route uh, included also uh, animals, insects, um, they would also be um, included in here. And then there is the locked section, uh, which are all the species which I yet have to encounter. And um, the same way it works in the specimens tab. So here are uh, let's imagine the cards that I'm collecting when I'm out uh, running after big friendly giants. So right now, these are only virtual cards, again, in two sections. One is discovered. So these are the ones that I have already collected. And under that are the locked ones, which I have yet to encounter. I can see this view either as a um, list of cards, or I can, again, go on the map and see what is my status. So um, card, what is inside of that card? Let's go and have a look. Um, Gloria, would you like to pick uh, one specimen that is worthy? Uh... I would say the Edward Castagne. All right. So let's have a look at, uh, at this horse chestnut. And um, so yeah, if you are familiar with um, this layout, um, this looks similar, but uh, what we've been working on in the last several months is sourcing the data for the ecosystem services to be able to communicate in a playful manner um, the benefits and yeah, just the ecosystem services of, um, of the trees. So you can see that we've got a new card here. We've got uh, CO2 stored in the lifetime of the tree and the CO2 stored mm -hmm. per year. 
Um, this data is in here and actually in all specimens, which is um, big news, thanks to a new cooperation that we have with um, iTree, which is a platform that is run uh, by an American company, actually a co-op called Davy. Uh, for over 100 years, I think they, they already specialize on trees ecosystem services. Um, so we have integrated their API and now for all the new specimens that are entered into the ARC, uh, we show the CO2 storage values and the height as calculated from the iTree API. Mm, yeah, very cool. Yeah, uh, there are many more actually things that uh, are available in their API. Um, ecosystem services related to air quality. So there is PM 2.5 and other different gases uh, removal. There is uh, data about uh, water runoff uh, avoidance. And what is actually their specialty is cooling or heating effects on nearby buildings. So this is we, what we don't include right now. Mm -hmm. But basically, their focus is to calculate the energy savings of nearby buildings uh, if there is a tree. Um, yeah, so that's it for now for the specimens. Did I, mm -hmm. did I forget something? No, I think it's good. Yeah, so do um, you want to continue with the badges? Cool, yeah. So... Mm, let's go on, uh, ask questions anytime that uh, you have any. So we have already seen that uh, I got the big friendly giant badges, but there have also been updates to the normal badges on the platform, which you can see on the top right. Uh, so uh, if you have a new profile, this card is empty because you don't have any badge yet you can get your first badge by setting your age. Um, but for convenience, I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch to my profile because that's already filled with badges. And uh, uh, it's a little bit easier to see. So right now, this uh, card is combining the, the platform badges and the badges that I got as certifications from different trainings. Uh, this is still just an overview like show off and the real information value comes when you enter this page and i'm going to zoom out now this page is um, divided into two categories one is the arc badges which contains all the badges that the platform itself awards uh, depending on different criteria so i've got the spirit animal which is coming out from my age. This is age dependent. Um, so that basically people know which phase of life they are in and uh, what uh, spirit animal they have currently with them. Then uh, there are the impact planets, which are uh, depending on impact points gained in participating uh, in activities. And then there are the impact trees where users gain uh, leaves of trees um, based on their facilitation impact points. So whenever they facilitate activities. So yeah, these are the automatic badges. And then on the right side, we've got uh, the badges from courses and trainings. So whenever you participate in a course on the ARC, then um, you, it can be ended um, or finalized with awarding a badge, which serves as a certification, which is then displayed in the user's profile together with some description and um, the activity that it was um, awarded in. Yeah, so these are the badges. Um, and last but not least, the uh, third update that we have for you this month are um, the shapes of commons. So if you have tried to create a commons in the past, you might remember that um, we didn't really collect the map 
information about the commons. So there was just the name and um, the textual description of the place, but mm -hmm. um, the platform actually didn't know where exactly you are and how to show it to people on the map. So now when you are creating a commons, um, the location field is actually a search bar. So let's try with Sankt Pulten. And here we go. Uh, the arc actually finds the shape. This is coming from uh, OpenStreetMap database. And uh, afterwards, this is then used to show to people spatial information about, uh, about the place. So let's have a look. For example, in St. Pulten, the space is used in here and also in the specimens tab where people can, can see what is their status in this commons. I can see the, the map. Well, um, what if I want to add a new one, a new specimen, and I am outdoors mapping? Uh, you might remember we showed the mapping tool. Um, so there was a problem that if you were in an area which you were not really familiar with, there was a possibility that you map a tree that was already mapped by somebody else. So with the new update of this month, uh, this will not be a problem anymore. So I'm switching here into the mobile view and I go into the mapping tool because it's only available on the mobile. And um, when I'm getting into the location, I can actually see all the specimens that are around me. Um, the color code in here is gray locked, not observed. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen this tree yet. Um, the green means I have already seen this tree, I have collected it. And uh, the black means it's somebody else's draft. So basically nobody has seen it yet, but somebody's already working on this. Mm -hmm. Right. I have a quick question about uh, Gloria showed before a root and the root was connected with lines and I guess there was an order and uh, so this is dynamically provided also by the OpenStreetMap API so if you set if you create the root with one two three four five order and then the lines connect and there were two different color of, of the lines. Um, how come there are different colors? Yeah, right. So this was just a screenshot from Google Maps. Ah, from Google Maps. Okay. <laughs> we, we're not there yet. So right now you can only actually see the specimens like as dots on a map. Ah, okay. But this visualization of the route, we, we don't have it yet. Ah, it would be nice. Okay. Yeah, so maybe maybe I I summarize here at this point also what Gloria showed is is actually the facilitation. Mm -hmm. So in the best practices that we have, um, or what we what we wanted to show today is that there is a first full gamification cycle now on on the arc that is about observation, collecting, receiving badges, and comparing yourself with others. But what we don't have now is, is the self-guided routes. So what would be necessary as a next step, and this is what we have already kind of uh, planned, is that uh, such trees, either um, uh, your location is recognized and you automatically uh, collect uh, those uh, specimens, or there are QR codes, what we think about right now in, in St. Burton with one route, and you scan a QR code so that people can actually really uh, autonomously uh, walk those routes. But this is really an outlook. This is not what we have now. Mm -hmm.